The sun. Much of our planet relies on it to survive. What would happen if there was too much of it? If the sun never set? For many, the sun reliably rises in the morning and sets at night. But there exists a place on Earth, up in Svalbard, Norway, where people have to live with the sun that doesn't set for 76 straight days at a time. How do they cope? And what would happen if the sun never set ever again? It's hard to imagine what the midnight sun looks like if you live in a place where daily sunrises and sunsets are the norm. But lucky for us, the internet can help. This video posted by YouTuber Richard Ross shows the sun arcing low across the horizon for a few days in Antarctica. As you can see, the sun, while it does pass behind the camera, never dips below the horizon. It's highest in the sky at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m., but on opposite sides. David Walker's video showing the Tulik Field Station in Alaska demonstrates that by midnight, the sun dips low toward the horizon, but never actually descends below it. The sun just does lazy circles above your head. It's not just research stations and Antarctic installations that experience this. YouTuber and popular TikToker Cecilia Bloomdahl shows us what stepping out her front door is like at midnight on the Norwegian island of Svalbard. Imagine the work that I could get done if the sun never set. But why exactly does the sun, which always crosses below the horizon daily for the majority of Earth, just not? As you may know, the Earth revolves around the sun, taking about 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, 46 seconds, an entire tropical year. The Earth also rotates along an axis, taking 23 hours and 56 minutes, which makes up a day. As we rotate away from the sun on the surface of the Earth, the sun appears to move through the sky. But from space, the Earth is just a rotisserie chicken slowly being roasted on a spit. From the surface of a roasted chicken, a barbecue would look like it was spinning around too. So why do certain places on Earth get constant sunlight and darkness for half the year? The reason is that the Earth's axis is tilted slightly. If you draw a line from the sun to the Earth, the axis on which we rotate isn't a perfect 90 degree angle. That tilt is about 23.4 degrees, which is what causes the midnight sun in places beyond 66.5 degrees latitude north or south of the equator. When the Earth is tilted toward the sun, the top side is constantly facing the sun for four months. However, that axis does rotate slightly, called axial precession, which is why the top and bottom of Earth get opposing months of light or dark. This is the same reason that we have summer and winter months at opposing times of the year for the southern and northern hemispheres. But if the sun never set, what problems would we encounter? Today's episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Sometimes your body, like a beautiful manicured flower bed, needs a little TLC. And Manscaped's performance package provides the best tools to groom your stinkiest, weediest zones. Say goodbye to nicks and cuts with the Lawnmower 4.0, the cordless waterproof body trimmer with advanced skin safe technology. Manscaped's Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer ensures that your grooming is pain-free. The performance package also comes with these extras. Your precious flowers have never smelled so good. Apply the Crop Preserver deodorant after your bath for all-day body odor prevention. The Crop Reviver Toner is as easy as spritzing a little calming aloe vera to freshen up. For a limited time, Manscaped is offering two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Head on to Manscaped.com today and use promo code BRUESOLVES to get 20% off plus free international shipping and two free gifts at checkout. Remember how often we need to tell people to not directly look at the sun? Especially during solar eclipses? That's because the sun is a deadly laser. And it can damage your eyesight or even blind you. But even when the sun reliably rises and sets, you can still get seriously messed up by the giant ball of nuclear fusion hanging above our heads. First off, there's ultraviolet radiation to think about. It's a form of electromagnetic radiation that has the potential to damage our skin and eyes. 
Most places humans live have UV indexes below a level of 12. However, the highest UV ever recorded was 43.3 at the Bolivia-Chile border, on the top of a volcano in the middle of one of the hottest summers in recent history in 2003. The index is affected by the amount of sunshine, the angle of the sun, latitude, elevation, the amount of ozone, and even the reflectivity of the ground. UV radiation is connected to many different illnesses, including skin cancer, premature aging, cataracts, and even immune suppression. UV radiation is also the reason you get sunburnt on sunny beach days, but you can still get sunburns on cloudy and cold days. One condition, snow blindness, is when light reflected off the snow sunburns the back of your eyes, blinding you temporarily. Ewan Affleck, a doctor based in Yellowknife, has even seen folks with burns on the roofs of their mouths from sunlight reflected off snow. Affleck recommends a brimmed hat over sunscreen, and just like a day at the beach, it's best to come prepared. Affleck doesn't give advice on how to keep your palate from burning, however. If I had to guess, I'd say the best way would be to breathe through your nose. See? Look how I do it. A constant sun would also wreak havoc on our circadian rhythms. Too much or too little light impacts melatonin production, which controls our sleep cycles. Hunger, sleep, and sexual drives are influenced by our circadian rhythm, and without changes from day to night, our bodies would struggle to fall into reliable cycles. Sleep deprivation, especially over a long period, can trigger seasonal affective disorder, a form of depression. If the sun was constantly beating down on us, it might get a little hot too. Really hot. The hottest air temperature ever recorded on Earth is 56.7 degrees Celsius in Death Valley, California. And if the sun never set, it would get much hotter very quickly. Heat isn't great for our mental and physical health. The Canadian Centre for Occupational Health and Safety notes that working in hot environments can lead to irritability, loss of concentration, and even the inability to perform skilled tasks. That's not even mentioning other related ailments, including heat swelling, rashes, cramps, exhaustion, syncope aka dizziness, and the granddaddy of all heat-related illnesses, heat stroke, which destroys your brain cells, killing you outright. Not to mention the dehydration connected to sweating can also kill you. We're back to episodes about how you can die, I hope you enjoyed the other ones while it lasted. It should be mentioned that for most places on Earth where the sun never sets for half the year today are places where it is very cold. You know, the Arctic and Antarctic circles. So we don't have a real life model to know how hot it would be if the sun shone down on one spot for eternity. For example, the town of Longyearbyen on Svalbard Island, God, I'm gonna get torn apart in these comments, sees a summer high temperature of a sweltering seven whole degrees centigrade. It's hard to theorize what would happen if the sun constantly baked only one side of our Earth, but we do have other planets that we can use to model what it would be like on a planet where the sun never sets. One of the only circumstances where the sun would never set would be if the world became tidally locked. When a planet's rotation perfectly synchronizes with the sun it revolves around, one side of it always faces the sun, while the other side always faces away. There are planetary bodies in our own solar system that are tidally locked, one of which you've definitely seen recently. It's our moon! Mercury was also thought to be tidally locked up until the 1960s, however, it's not truly locked. It revolves at a 3 to 2 orbital resonance, meaning that for every two revolutions, the planet rotates three times. So it's a pretty slow rotisserie roast, if we're still using our chicken math from earlier. The moon, on the other hand, is perfectly locked. As the moon revolves around the Earth, only one face ever faces us. Astronomers are interested in tidally locked worlds because we've found that up to three quarters of the stars in our galaxy are smaller and burn cooler than our sun. So any planets fit for human life would likely have to be much closer to their suns than we are to ours, and the majority of those hypothetical planets would be drawn into tidally locked orbits. Distances experts believe would be similar to Mercury's distance from our sun. So if we want to get any cool space colonies going, Mama Mia. We're going to have to figure these planets out. But what would happen if the Earth suddenly became tidally locked? The short answer is we'd most likely all die horribly and very quickly. But to be fair, any sudden planetary change would kill us. 
so that ought to help you feel better. But let's say that for some hypothetical astronomical reason, the Earth's rotation very suddenly snapped into place, with North and South America facing the Sun. The Earth rotates at about 1,000 miles per hour, so if it stopped without any prolonged deceleration, the first thing we'd notice is inertia. Basically, everything, including us and all of the oceans, would fly a thousand miles per hour eastward. If we miraculously didn't die from the impact of something hitting us at that speed, we'd probably drown as all the oceans on Earth would be suddenly whipped to the east. North and South America would be covered in the Pacific Ocean, Africa and Europe covered in the Atlantic. Point being, it would be hashtag not great. Maybe it wouldn't kill everyone, but that's a huge neon blinking maybe. If we managed to survive that, the next thing we'd need to contend with would be the wind. Much like the rest of Earth, the wind also has inertia. So, as Earth stops, winds would continue whipping around us at 1,000 miles per hour, plus whatever speed the wind was going in the first place, scraping the surface clean. We'd be dust on a coffee table snuffed out by massive interstellar leaf blowers. Oh, this gives me an idea for a sci-fi novel. FYI, the strongest wind speeds ever recorded on Earth were in Australia during tropical cyclone Olivia in 1996. But those speeds were only 253 miles per hour, a quarter of the speeds we'd encounter if the Earth stopped rotating. Most houses in America are only rated to survive 146 miles per hour winds. However, there are structures that can withstand 250 mile per hour wind. Needless to say, it would suck really bad. The oceans wouldn't just fly eastward like the rest of everything, but also migrate north and south to the poles. The Earth isn't a perfect sphere. In fact, it's about 21 kilometers wider at the equator than pole to pole. This also means the oceans are deeper along the equator as well. When the rotation of the Earth stops, the landmass that has, over the course of billions of years, jutted out along the equator would remain, and the oceans moving out would leave a belt-like strip of raised land at the equator as the only land left. Okay, so if literally anyone managed to survive that, then the next thing they'd notice would be that the sun stopped moving in the sky. So, no more sunsets. Yay? At first, we might not notice any changes, but the daylight side would soon begin to heat up as high as 400 degrees Celsius, and the night side would begin to cool as low as minus 200 degrees Celsius. On a more human scale, with the lack of rotation, the passing of days and night would obviously stop. Our circadian rhythms that control a lot of our internal systems would get all sorts of messed up. With changes in light, our bodies wouldn't know what to do. One method to counteract this is as simple as blackout curtains and sleep masks. If you visit Iqaluit, Nunavut and Dawson City, Yukon in northern Canada, you'll see many houses with windows covered in aluminum foil in the height of summer to block the perpetual summer light when inhabitants are trying to get some sleep. After the massive winds die down, we'd see swift changes to climate. Global rainfall and extreme shifts in temperature as the Earth's rotation no longer plays a role in global wind patterns. Deserts could become rainforests. Tundras could become humid marshland. It's all fair game on this new, objectively worse Earth. We're actually already seeing some of the effects of this on a much smaller scale due to man-made climate change. And without reliable climate cycles, it's pretty tricky to, you know, grow food to eat? You know what is nice though? No more hurricanes. The rotational force of hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones are imparted to them from the Coriolis effect. In short, as the wind is dragged into the center of the storm by a low pressure system, the earth moves below it, bending the wind in a clockwise direction in the south and counterclockwise in the north. Basically, if you were to throw a football from the equator to your friend standing at the North Pole, the ball would look like it curves to the east, because it has the higher momentum of the equator, as opposed to the pole, which barely rotates at all. But without the Earth's rotation, there aren't more hurricanes. Yay! So, that's a blessing. The surface of the Earth might look like a wet slab of concrete devoid of all life nigh unrecognizable to what it used to be, but hey, 
every cloud has a silver lining, I guess? The Earth's rotation also creates our planet's magnetic field. One theory suggests that the movements of Earth's liquid core create something called a dynamo, just like a giant generator creating magnetic fields. However, without this massive magnetic field, we would no longer be able to navigate using a compass, and our electronics and telecommunication would be much more vulnerable to solar flares and other sun-related particles. Our magnetic field also protects our ozone layer from solar wind, and without it, our ozone could become worn down quicker than expected, leading to higher levels of UV radiation, leading to possible higher levels of cancer. Magnetic fields are also important to the maintaining of an atmosphere, which we need, you know, to breathe. These are the things that would happen to us in the immediate aftermath of a sudden tidal locking. Over time, it's possible that all of the water on Earth would exist in either massive glaciers or in pure vapor form. One side of the Earth constantly baking in the sun would get furiously hot, while the other side would never see the light of the sun freezing solid. But I can already hear you thinking, what about the little bit of land between the cold side and the hot side? And that's really smart, you're really smart, you know that? It's possible that life could be sustained in the so-called twilight zone. It's possible that plants and animal life could adapt to the change. However, if it happens suddenly, I'm not holding out much hope. Over time, however, I'm simply saying that life, uh, finds a way. It's even possible that humans could find a way to live on the hot and cold sides of our objectively worse Earth. Heat could be transported from hot side to cold via geothermal energy. Water, likewise, could be moved from cold side to the hot. We could even develop technology to protect us from the waves of solar radiation we'd be bombarded with on the hot side. Of course, this is a lot of coulds. But in the words of Adiv Paradise, an astrophysicist with the University of Toronto, I'm from Minnesota. People manage to live in all sorts of places astronomers would describe as not habitable. Lucky for us, none of us living today, nor anyone living a hundred years from now, nor anyone living a hundred thousand years from now, would actually live to see the end of the Earth's rotation. The Earth's rotation actually is slowing down though, albeit very, very slowly. On average, the Earth's rotation slows about 1.7 milliseconds every century. So if we quickly math this out, it'll take about 58,800 years for a day to get one second shorter than it is today. And I thought daylight savings time sucked. But until then, let's cherish every sunrise and sunset we have on this objectively better Earth, even when it takes six months to get there. Head on to manscaped.com today and use promo code BRUSOLVES to get 20% off plus free international shipping and two free gifts at checkout.